Hey guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to the Dyslexic Reader and welcome to another episode of Novelty Chats, our Sunday videos where we have bookish discussions. I start the topic off my video and then we all talk about it in the comments and it's great fun. Unfortunately this week I don't have a mug of the week. I'm in a rush today and I literally don't even have time to sit down and make a cup of coffee and enjoy it. I've just got to do the video and then I've got to leave again. So no mug of the week for me today but you can still pause the video here if you choose and go and get a mug or something for yourselves to go along with the discussion. A quick reading update. I finished Catcher in the Rye. I'm still undecided about how to rate it but I think it'll roughly be a four star and I also start and finished The Candleman by Alex Scarrow. If you've been watching the channel you'll know that I read my first Alex Scarrow book last month, October Skies. I reviewed it on the channel, I'll link the full review and absolutely adored it and I absolutely adored this one as well. Another five star for me. His writing is so immersive. His plots are so well thought out. It's just good fun. They're short chapters. They're quick books to read and I have just been really enjoying his work. And I have started The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. This was recommended by Hannah over at Hannah Tay and I'll link her booktube channel down below. You can go and check her out. She read this recently and recommended it. And we have quite different tastes in books but if she ever likes something that I think I would like I normally do if I think it's a genre that I would like. So it's a chunker of a book. Um, I only started it yesterday. I'm about 50 pages in and I'm enjoying it so far. It's a story of six sisters and they're, fat, they're all adopted from all over the world and none of them knows where they're come from and as adults their adoptive father dies and they all get clues as to where they're from and we follow Mia. I think is the is the eldest sister in it. Maya. Maya. Mia. Confusing. And we follow her story as the eldest sister and they get clues and she goes and finds out where she's from. So we haven't really got that far into it but I'm really enjoying it so far. The writing style is really nice. Now I'm guessing you have gleamed from the title that today I'm going to be talking about sort of the pressure of booktube and whether it has become more quantity driven rather than quality driven. I have found this has been a topic for the last couple of months really on booktube. People have been talking about it. I'm not going to link any specific videos because I can't remember all who's been talking about it but it's sort of been rattling about in my head and I've been thinking about it. Whether because booktube is seen like with wrap ups and things to be competitive almost to read more and more books then are people reading through books so quickly that they're not getting sort of the quality enjoyment out of them that they would normally get if they read at their own pace. And I think this sort of idea comes from a number of things. Everyone is doing their Goodread challenge. If you're on Goodreads you'll have a challenge and obviously everyone's is a different goal but I think people are pushing to reach their challenges and every year trying to make their challenges higher and higher so that could be where it comes from. Obviously hauls and wrap ups, people are buying more books and then have to get through more books and in wrap ups people just don't want to show like a book for a month. They feel like that's not enough, it's not worth making a video about so they want to read more. And I would say readathons as well are adding to this pressure of trying to get a certain amount of goals hit in a certain amount of time, read so many pages a day, so many books a week, fulfill all the challenges, that kind of thing. And I think that all sort of adds up to the general message of you should be reading more. But I feel on booktube personally that I come under no expectations of anyone except the ones that I put on myself. Uh, when it comes to readathons I put my own challenges in place. Um, when it comes to wrap ups and things. I don't find myself comparing to other people. I'm comparing to myself. So I find, oh, I read five books last month and I only read three this month. That's a bummer. But I'm comparing to myself. I don't tend to find myself being compared in my head to other channels. It's not that I'm going, oh, I only read five this month and she read 20. It's more comparison on myself and I don't think that is necessarily as unhealthy as comparing yourself to other people to try and beat your own goals. And I have never on booktube in any videos heard anyone like explicitly saying you should be trying to read more. 
all the readathon announcements are so chill and just do what you can fit in and you don't have to do any of these goals it's just about participating I've never seen anyone do a video that, like or comment even on a video that you should be reading more two books in a wrap-up isn't enough so I feel like this pressure comes from in our, inside ourselves and it's not necessarily coming from the community although we're using the community to put it on ourselves if you understand what I mean you're not being pressured by the community to read 10 books a month but it's just seeing other people doing that and then you put that pressure on yourself and you're using them as evidence but I don't think the pressure is coming necessarily from the community. I found recently in my re not requested page what's that thing called recommended my recommended feed on YouTube a lot of reading vlogs are coming up and I have been enjoying some of them I haven't really been watching the ones of the people I don't subscribe to because I think watching a vlog of someone that you know nothing about is kind of weird to me because I don't really know like the context of all these different things but of the people that I do subscribe to I enjoy their vlogs and I think that the vlogs sort of ease pressure so they're not if they're not readathon vlogs they're just general weekly weekend daily reading vlogs then it's more about the process than the end goal so it's not about finishing that book that week it's how and when you read and how it fits into your daily life and sort of documenting that so I think that's a lot more chill and people have to really see both sides so okay wrap-ups and readathons could be putting pressure on some people but there's also a lot of things about booktube that are like easing pressure as well and I think there's a lot of positive things out there even just people's attitudes and comments on videos as well as the popularity of reading vlogs where it's not quality driven I think shows that it's not coming from the community and I have found in my personal experience just to wrap up let you know how um, I feel is that booktube has motivated me to read but it has never felt like a pressure so yeah I'm competing with myself I want to read more and more and more but I don't think that it's really a stress on me it's um, made it more enjoyable to be able to talk to it with you guys and through Goodreads and things being able to compete with myself I think that has added an enjoyment to reading and that and a motivation but I would never say that it had added pressure or stress upon me to read more than how it fits into my daily life so I would love to know how you feel about how booktube affects your reading whether you're just a watcher or whether you're a creator I think that would be really interesting because obviously things like this affect everyone in a completely different way so I think it's really interesting how people view topics like this because it is so personal so comment down below um, what do you think of these videos. Do they create stress and pressure or is that from within? Do you think it can be a good thing? It can be a motivator and it can bring people into the community or do you think it's isolating people and putting people off? Um, I can't wait to get stuck in and chat with all you guys. Sorry there's no mug of the week this week. I'm a bit disappointed in myself to be honest. But this weekend is completely hectic for me and I really don't have time. But mug of the week will be back next week and I'll make sure it's a good mug okay I promise you that I hope you're all happy I hope you're all healthy and hopefully I shall see you in my next video goodbye